What is going on, Internet? Nerdlocker.com here with this week's comic book reviews. I'm starting off with Batman number 30. This is the final act of uh, the zero-year epic that Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo have been doing. The thing I love about this story is it's just on this massive scale. Like, it's, it's something they've talked about in the, the current Batman run where they talk about zero year. and Remember zero year. And you're just seeing now how absolutely massive it is. The Riddler has, or he's just going by Enigma now, but uh, the, he has the entire city of Gotham under his control. Because of the flood, it's now just this, like, forested area and people are starving and people are dying and it's just he has control and Batman Bruce Wayne Batman realizes he's like you know what I've lost twice now to this guy and it keeps getting worse this time I have to beat him like this is what I have to do um, you see Gordon kind of trying to help what he can with uh, everything going on but it's just there's so much bad that's happened it's hard for anyone to really see what good is like what good they can get out of this. But Gordon and Batman kind of like team up at the end there. And I'm really excited to see what this does to like the, just the foundation of the Batman, the Batman epic and the origin story that they're doing with the new 52. Like it's just, it's so big. I cannot wait to see what else is in store. I'm giving this five out of five nerd skulls. Let me know what you guys thought. Hey there guys, Cubby here with my reviews for this week. I get to read Star Mage number one from IDW, and I, did, I didn't enjoy this book. It was, uh, it's mainly geared towards a younger reader. It's about a little kid who uh, kind of finds out that he has magic powers. They're not really magical, they're like space magic, because he's a star mage, which is like a chronomancer or something like that. Something so like, it's kind of cool, but it's just weird and out there and kind of dumb, and not really dumb, but uh, I just didn't really get pulled into this book there's kind of few things that uh, seem tried and true to, to a certain extent. Like, uh, 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 I felt a lot of influences that I've read before. Like, oh, that's a cool thing. I'm going to do this. Like, Nova stuff. Like, I don't know. It just didn't really, like, click with me all that well. The artwork wasn't, like, pulling me in. It was, it was just very basic comic booky to me. Um, but it kind of seems like it has a little bit of, of potential to it to be a little different, a little crazy. Um, I just, right now I wasn't wowed, so I'm only going to give it three out of five nerd skulls for right now. Um, and check it out. Let me know what you guys think. Hey guys, I got to read another number one out of Boom Studios this week called Translucid. Uh, it's written by Claudio Sanchez, the front man of Coheed and Cambria. I was a big fan of Amory Wars, the comic, mostly because I grew up on the, uh, on all the albums that I was super confused about. <clears throat> In Translucid, it's actually a big foray into another genre. It's uh, a superhero book. It's actually, uh, the artist is Chandra Eckert, his, uh, his wife, and it's actually a newcomer with him by the name of Daniel Bayless. Uh, the, the comic follows a hero named the Navigator and his arch nemesis, the horse, and uh, basically it's kind of a, a cool, interesting look at the Batman and Joker dynamic, um, where in this book, the horse being the villain, uh, has sort of noticed the hero's, his moral value kind of tip, and he wants to see w uh, exactly why that happened, and that's why this, this book is so interesting. It's, it's a Batman and Joker story, not being about the two characters, and uh, it, it's a whole new look at what, where, what would happen if Batman actually kind of lost his mind. So uh, I, I really want to recommend it because it was, it was weird at, at the beginning, but it actually got really good at the end. Uh, the horse character is... Uh, a man with a horse head, so you're going to have to get used to that. I don't know why they decided to do that, but this is just a world full of weird characters. Uh, the art is great by, uh, by Daniel Bayliss and, uh, and Chandra Eckert, so I'm going to give it five out of five nerd skulls, so check it out. All right, I got to read Superior Spider-Man number 31, the last issue of Superior Spider-Man. Peter Parker is back, and he is trying real quickly to fix everything that's happened. Um... It's cool having Peter back, and it's just one of those things that I thought Superior Spider-Man was going to set up for a better world for Peter, but now he has to pick up all the pieces that Doc Ock kind of left, just all the things he messed up, and now he's stuck with that baggage. And he's going around, he's trying to make amends of the best of, of what he can, the best that he can, but it's just, I, I, I like it now that it's over, 
you know, it's a part of Spider-Man history, but I just hope that this opens up some really cool new stories for Spider-Man. And honestly, I would just like to see the guy catch a break because he's been through a lot and I'm sick of Marvel picking on him. But either way, this is a good last issue, ties up everything. And yeah, can't wait for more Peter Parker, Amazing Spider-Man. I'm giving this four out of five nerd skulls. Let me know what you guys thought. All right, guys, so I got to read Hulk number one this week. And I got to say, I'm not a big Hulk reader. I'm not a huge Hulk fan either. Uh, he's a great character, and I like him in, in certain things as an Avenger, um, things like that. But I'm not a big, like, yeah, Hulk, he's misunderstood or whatever. It's just kind of like, yeah, I get it. He's misunderstood. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's been around for so long that you really can't surprise me with the Hulk too much. So... You know, reading this, it was like, oh, man, Bruce Banner was shot in the back of the head, and he's like, hasn't turned into the Hulk yet. Oh, that's nuts. And it actually was kind of pretty cool in the beginning, but at the end of it, it just kind of lost me. It just completely lost me. Or it's like, oh, he's going to get away. And, like, if you know you're Marvel, you know that he has a healing factor that rivals, if not exceeds, Wolverine's. So if he transforms into the Hulk, he's going to be back to normal, uh, but he doesn't. And it kind of complicates things at the end. And that's where it lost me. And that's where it's kind of like, well, this story doesn't even mean anything to the vast Marvel Universe because he's the most important character. He's going to be one of the bigger parts of Avengers 2. And you can't really mess him up before that happens. So as much as I want to be stoked for the rest of this series and a brain dead Bruce Banner, I'm not that excited. So I'm only going to give it three out of five nerd skulls. All right, I got to read Justice League number 29. This is by far my favorite forever evil tie-in book because we're seeing cyborg uh just trying to pick up the pieces of the crime syndicate destroying the justice league and he's teaming up with the metal men in this and this is so awesome because we get to see the metal men throw down we get to see them now i hopefully be a part of the new 52 universe i mean i love the metal men i've always been a giant fan and this is just awesome and it's a big cyborg grid fight, which is really cool. And it really just builds on the character that Cyborg is. The one thing I liked about the new 52 is that you really got to see Cyborg move up from the Teen Titan that we've known into a member of the Justice League. And even though it's a different universe than what we've been reading most of our lives, it's cool seeing Cyborg become a member of the Justice League because he deserves it. He's always been that good, that smart. And this just kind of solidifies that and it really sets up for this final issue of forever evil that i cannot wait to read this is great i really hope we see more metal men i like to see cyborg take a bigger presence in the justice league book going forward but this is great you need to pick it up i'm giving it four out of five nerd skulls all right guys so i got to read thor god of thunder number 21 and holy crap this book is a lesson in how to be badass and old and Norse, uh, because it's pretty much just Thor, who is, no matter what he looks like, he's an old dude, because he's been around for thousands and thousands of years, but he's badass nonetheless, as old King Thor, as regular Thor that we know, as young Thor, he's still a really awesome dude, he's not young Thor in this at all, so don't worry, but um, his fight with Galactus is getting a little more dragged out, uh, they're actually fighting and throwing down, and it's one of the coolest fights I've ever seen in the Marvel Universe, and his fight on Earth with Roxxon just got like crazier and bureaucratic. And it's actually kind of awesome because as much as he wants to be the god that he is, he understands, the, the coolest thing about Thor is that he understands that Earth is its own thing and he respects it so much that he abides by its laws and he just got screwed over by its laws. So I can't wait to see what happens with him ignoring them and being American and stuff like that. So that'd be cool. Um, I'm going to give this four out of five nerd skulls though because it's one of my favorite books. Everyone should be reading it. Always, all the time. All right, I got to read Ultimate FF number one. Uh, the Fantastic Four, I'm, I don't think that's what this stands for now. and They actually don't say if it's Future Foundation, Fantastic Four, whatever. But that's a team in the Ultimate Universe I've been waiting to see kind of get relaunched. Being that the X-Men and the Ultimates, and it's always been all these different people all this time, I was always surprised that they never did anything with Sue Storm and Ben Grimm more than what we saw with them on the sidelines, kind of. So this is cool to see that. It's uh, Invisible Woman, uh, Iron Man, Machine Man, Falcon, and Mysterious Fifth Character, who's really, really, 
really awesome when you find out who he is. And I like that the Ultimate Universe, that's the thing I liked about the Ultimate Universe is they're not afraid to do things with different characters because it's a different world and it doesn't have the same implications. I'm hoping this is something that sticks though. I'd really like to see this flush out and do a lot more story. I like the characters, I like the dynamic, and with this last person being introduced, I really like, I want to see where this goes. I want to see what the implications are. So I suggest picking this up. I mean, it's a good starting point. It's number one, and the Ultimate Universe is kind of in a new direction now. So I would pick this up. I'm giving it four out of five Nerd Skulls. All right, guys. So I got to read Sinestro number one, and I got to say this is one of my all-time favorite bad guys. Even though I don't even like bad guys to begin with, he's one of my favorites to follow because he was such a good guy, such an awesome dude trying to train the next awesome dude in line after him. And he ended up becoming, actually just being the entire time, like the biggest dick in the world. And slowly but surely he ended up becoming even more of a total asshole. And you really can't hate him for most of it, which is kind of cool. You can kind of get behind him. At least I can. Um, I was really excited for this though because of the last, since he's been around, he's just always done really cool things and, and brought really, the, him being a part of something has always brought really cool things to the DC universe, like the, the Sinestro Corps and the whole light war that ensued after that. Um, it was just really awesome to see his character grow, become ultimate evil, ultimate good, and then just bounce. And it was, it was like, okay, well, he's going to come back eventually. He didn't die. And like, it was tragic or whatever. And then now he's coming back. It's like, no, he's just been away doing his own thing, clearing his head, and this is finally him coming back and being like, I got stuff to do. So I was really excited for it. I was really, really stoked to see what they would do with this character, uh, and I was actually pleasantly surprised that I was not disappointed. Uh, Dale Eaglesham artwork is one of my favorites. I fell in love with him in Just a Society of America, written by Jeff Johns, and that was just a great series, mainly because the artwork was really good and it wasn't too overdone and big and bulky, but it also wasn't too plain it had like a good mix of being very eh, kind of realistic but also a, a comic book at the same time you totally understood that it was characters and they had big action stuff but it had a sense of realism to it which i love and this kind of has the same thing and you're dealing with sinestro a purple dude and a sinestro core which is just a group of things from the universe and it all still looks kind of real even though it's a, a, clearly a comic book it still looks kind of real i love that I love that in any story, and this one does it really well. And then Cullen Bell, Bun, Cullen Bun, sorry, uh, he actually wrote a really good story. It wasn't Jeff Johns, and I usually get really, really disappointed when a character is done really well by one uh, writer, and it's not done as well with someone else, but he had a really good take on this character and where he was coming from and, and the way he sees himself in the world and in the universe. So I really enjoyed that all around. Five out of five during the book. Check it out, and I can't wait to see where this dude ends up this year. All right, I got to read Wonder Woman number 30, and my God, this book is amazing. It's just been great. The last issue we see Wonder Woman finally accept that she is the god of war and the, the queen of the Amazons, and she has all this army behind her and all this power behind her to go fight the firstborn on Mount Olympus, and you kind of see where lines are being drawn with the other gods, uh, Poseidon and Hades and a bunch of other uh, people in the book and just seeing what's going on with them. But this book is outstanding. Like, this book is just absolutely outstanding. Like, between Brian Azzarello's story and Cliff Chang's artwork, it, it's just the best. I, I can't say enough good things about this book. If you aren't a Wonder Woman fan, I suggest going to, the bat, go, like going to the beginning of this and picking up the trades or finding the individual issues because this story is just absolutely incredible. I heard they might be coming to an end soonish, which disappoints me thoroughly, but my God, this is a good story. Pick it up. This issue gets five out of five Nerd Skulls. Let me know what you guys thought if you're reading this.